This is my Super Curamatic, a UV resin curing station that I made out of a broken microwave and about $20 in additional parts. And today, I'm going to show you how I made it. Welcome back. So I've been getting kind of into SLA resin 3D printing lately, and it's safe to say I am a fan. Not only is SLA resin print quality substantially higher than most of the FDM machines, and the parts that come out of it are practically injection molded quality, but these things seem to be super reliable. Even a cheap one like this, I've barely had any problems with it. Contrast that to the FDM machines, which seem like they're constantly breaking down and requiring some sort of fiddle faddling to get them up and running again. Now, the only thing I don't really like very much about SLA printing is that SLA printing, unlike FDM printing, requires a multiple step curing process before you can actually use the printed parts. What I mean by that is with FDM printing, you can basically just take the part right off the printer and it's ready to go. I mean, providing it printed correctly. With SLA printing, you have to first take the part off the printer and then rinse off any remaining resins using a wash of isopropanol or some other kind of similar solvent. At which point, you can take the printed but not fully cured part and place it under a bright UV light to complete the curing process and to make the part as hard as like an injection molded part. Now the curing process is where things can get a little tricky. You want to expose the part evenly to UV light on all sides for sort of an indeterminate amount of time, usually about 20 to 30 minutes or so. Now one sort of popular thing to do is to go buy one of these UV curing chambers for nail polish. So like the idea would be you put nail polish on and then you put your hand in this thing and it cures your nail polish. Now that's fine. The only issue with this is that, you know, it's only maybe a couple inches tall, so you can't put any large parts in here. And the other thing is that you have to sort of keep turning the part around inside this chamber in order to get it exposed on all sides. Couple that with the fact that the part is way in here somewhere, and you're sort of doing this weird pizza oven poking and prodding routine, and it's just kind of a lot of effort for not a great return. Another popular thing to do is to go on Amazon and buy one of these kits. Inside the kit is a very inexpensive UV light that just plugs into the wall and one of these funny little solar turntables. Now the idea is that you just sort of plug the UV light in and put it off to the side and then you place your part like that on the little solar powered turntable and it just spins it around in front of the UV light until it's properly cured. Now this seems like a great idea, but in practice it's kind of not so much. You see, the biggest issue is that you're really not supposed to look at these UV lights while they're on. So I guess you just have to turn it on and then leave the room for a little while. Also, you have no way of knowing that you've exposed it for long enough, especially if you've left the room. And let's be honest, this just, this is just a piece of junk. I mean, good luck putting anything that weighs more than like, you know, an ounce on this thing. Otherwise, it's just, it's just gonna break. Like, that's ridiculous. So, I figured there had to be a better way. I thought to myself, there's got to be a machine that already has a programmable timer, power-operated turntable, and mostly UV-sealed case, all in sort of one nice cromulent package that I could repurpose for my needs. Enter the broken microwave. Okay, okay, okay. I can hear everybody in the comments shouting, Shut up and show us how to make it already! And you know, I aim to please. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself a broken microwave. This one was given to me because they said it emitted a burning smell. And the other one was given to me simply because it wasn't worth anything. Yep, that's right. Domestic microwaves are at the doorstop part of the depreciation curve. This model happens to be a Hamilton Beach made exclusively for Walmart. Quality. But really, that doesn't matter. It could be from any brand. And like I said before, it doesn't actually have to work in the sense that it doesn't have to actually heat up food anymore. However, we do want one that has both a functioning turntable and a functioning timer board, as those are two things that we're going to use for this project. 
Here I'm just kind of wiping off some of the accumulated grease and grime from the outside of this thing. It was pretty dirty on the outside, but luckily the inside ended up being nice and clean. My biggest fear with getting free microwaves is that I'm going to open one up and it's full of roaches or something. The actual process of getting into a microwave is very easy. You just remove a few screws around the outside. I think these were T15 Torx bits? I'm not sure. And that allows you to just sort of pull up on the back of the shell and it comes right off. Before we go any further, I want to take a minute to talk about safety. Microwaves, even these cheap consumer grade ones, can be quite dangerous when disassembled. Microwaves contain high voltage electronics that can seriously injure or kill you if you don't know what you're doing. The reason I'm being so laissez-faire with taking this one apart is that it's been unplugged and sitting in storage for several months, and I'm reasonably confident that even if I touch the wrong thing, I'm not going to die. I have to stress, if at any point in this project you feel like you don't know what you're doing, stop. Your ineptitude could lead to you being seriously injured or killed. This is not an insult. Open a tab in your web browser and learn how to work on high voltage electronics safely. I won't be insulted at all, and I'll still be here when you get back. Now that that's out of the way, we can get back to the disassembly process. We have to remove everything in the microwave that, well, makes microwaves, which is the magnetron device, the driver, which is like a big transformer, and our capacitor. None of these parts are necessary for curing things with UV, so we can just get rid of all of them. Modern microwaves are great because it's all a self-contained system. All the control board does is turn on 120 volts to that driver, which then powers everything. So if we just remove that, we can tap into the 120 volts to drive our light. And since we're not actually going to use any of this stuff again, it can all basically just go... In the bin! Next thing I had to do was remove this internal waveguide piece. It's spot welded onto the main cabinet of the microwave. Now, I'm sure there's a million ways to skin this proverbial cat. You know, you could use an angle grinder, or a spot weld cutter, or a dremel. But I'm going caveman style. A big flathead screwdriver and a hammer to just break through the spot welds one by one. Just basically prying the thing off the cabinet. Did it work? Yeah, it worked really well. Is it elegant? Hell no. That being said, would I do it again? Sure, why not? It's not like you're going to see it once the lid goes on. Next I did some fairly rudimentary measuring and marking, just by holding the light up and marking around the top with a sharpie marker. The two sets of lines you see are because originally I was going to cut the hole a little bit too small so the light would be somewhat of an interference fit. I didn't actually end up doing this, so the two sets of lines were somewhat useless. Then I could attack it with an angle grinder and cut the hole out, and clean it all up with a file. Following the barbaric waveguide removal and angle grinder attack, the internals of the microwave, they weren't looking so good. So I made this nice coroplast bezel to hide all the damage. You know, what you can't see won't hurt you. Now we can go ahead and mount the light in the case of the microwave. It fits quite well in that coroplast bezel I made, and we can actually use the bracket that the light came with to screw it into the case of the microwave. Okay, I can hear myself think now that the neighbors have turned the music off, um, and I'll catch you up on what I've done. So the light here is just attached with its original bracket, but I just bent this at a right angle, as you saw, and I went ahead and attached it to the casing of the microwave just with a self-tapping screw and I position the light in such a way that it's angled slightly down inside the cabinet. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's just if you have a very small part in the center here, it helps to point the light more directly at it, basically. So the last thing I need to do is connect the light, which originally just had this plug and switch, to 120 volts, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it right to the original wires that powered the magnetron inside the microwave. Um, the magnetron took a 120 volt input and the microwave already has a relay on the logic board here that switches the magnetron on and off when the microwave is running. So we can harness that and just use that to turn the light on and off instead. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the light off here and these spade terminals. Now I'm gonna strip all the wires Now to connect everything together, I'm going to use a couple of these Wago, or Vago in German, 
uh, lever nut electrical connectors. These things are fantastic. All you have to do is flip the little lever up like this and put the wire in and then flip the lever back down again and the wire is captured in there and it never comes out. So I'm just gonna do that and connect the power feed for the magnetron to the two wires for the light. Okay, I went ahead and plugged it in, so let's see if it works. Everything from the microwave should still work just fine, like the light, which turns on when I open the door, and there's a fan right there. And um, so if we go ahead and select, I don't know, let's say 30 seconds, it should turn the light on, and it absolutely does. And we just have to wait until it runs out of time and it should turn the light off. Perfect. Let's uh, put it back together. All right, that's pretty much all there is to it. The machine is functional. I put it all back together again, and I tested it, and it works great. But there is one more thing I want to do. You see, the UV light that I put in this thing, it's not really great to look at it with sort of unprotected eyes. You can for a while, but it could lead to vision damage later on if you were to look at it repeatedly for a long time. Now, I guess I could just spray paint over the window or something like that so you can't see the light at all, but I kind of like watching the little parts going around and around on the turntable. So I went out and I bought a sheet of this UV-resistant acrylic, and I'm just going to cut it down and glue it right over the inside of the window. So we can still see what's going on in there, but it'll just cut down on some of the harmful UV. And to attach this into the door, I'm just going to use a little hot glue. Well, I think we got a real winner with this one. So I think the only thing left to do is let's give it a try. I went ahead and printed up a test object here so you can get to see the process of curing a resin print from start to finish. It's not super involved, but it's a little bit more involved than FDM. First thing I'm gonna do is pull it off the printer here. And yes, I am wearing gloves. I don't need to get cancer any faster than necessary. I'm gonna get a putty knife here and try to detach it from the bed. This part can be a little tricky. Oh, we're going. There we go. Whoop. That resin is very slippery. And now I have to do an isopropanol wash on it to get rid of all this excess resin. Okay, so the part is in the bath of isopropanol on the magnetic stir plate, and I'm going to let this sit here and simmer on low for 15 to 20 minutes, and I'll be right back. Alright, so this has been going here in the isopropanol for about 20 minutes or so. Go ahead and pull it out. That seems pretty good. So I'm going to give it a little blow dry here with my little cordless electric blow gun. Super handy little thing to have. These are great if you do this kind of stuff. Alright, now let's go pop it into our freshly made UV curing station. I'm going to put it in here for 20 minutes. And now we wait. All right, let's see how it did. Wow, looks just about perfect to me. Nice and dry and perfectly cured. Hard as a rock. Well, that's basically all there is to it. The Super Curomatic Machine, made out of a cheap UV light and a free microwave. I'm interested to hear if anybody has any ideas on how to improve this design. I love reading people's comments 
about how I can make stuff better. And I've never seen anybody do something like this before. So I'm sure there's room for improvement. Also, if you make one of these yourself, I want to see it. Send me a picture, send me a video, something like that. Get in contact with me and tell me that it worked. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, until next time, see you later. Wow, perfect benchies every time.